go. Okay, so um, so we're here at Rancho Marine. Do you want to say anything about the land management, Keith, or not? No. The land management here? Yeah. You want to, I mean, I, I can do it, but you could. You want to give us your? Uh, uh, well, let me let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, Director Seidel, <laughs> what is cool about uh, the Rancho Marino um, Research Reserve here? Well, there's several cool things about the Rancho Marino Reserve. One is the 250 acres of Monterey pines. It's a native Monterey pine forest. Um, Monterey pines grow natively only between Monterey and here. And it's about 18,000 acres there. There's millions of acres of Monterey pines planted around the world. Uh, mostly in places like New Zealand, Chile, Australia. Um, if you go to Home Depot, you're likely to see one right on the 2x4 in the Home Depot. Um, there are lots of researchers who come from places like that to see what the native things are like uh, increase in the We also have this California coastal terrace prairie here, um, and that's kind of a rare. Because that's where pretty much everybody has built their house. Beautiful spot right along the coast. And uh, we have about 250 acres of grass. Rare, rare grass. Damn it. Uh, these are two pretty interesting things about the reserve. And then, of course, the intertidal is pretty pristine because it's a really protected area offshore and we need to protect access to the intertidal here along the bottom. So we have three interesting. So we talked about protected areas. Um, uh, this is an example of, you know, our, a biological reserve, right? The area where we don't we don't allow people to, you know, complete no take stuff in the water on land, um, and we don't have many of those. And this is also a, a special kind of category, not like our station out on Santa Rosa, which is primarily about education and research. This is primarily about a re about research, and then there's also some education. So the important the important point of that is. These were, this network was crafted when these three um, older professors in the 60s basically said, hey, we're losing California ecosystems and we should have some places where we could just monitor the change of the forests, of the deserts, of the you know, da 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 And so that was the birth of this network. And, uh, and the idea here is that, one, we can use them to sort of document change um, but also it's a laboratory for researchers that can come put stuff out. And so one of the problems is like say national parks or forests, yes, those are important parts of the management as well, but it's uh, the public can have access, right? Or you might have a ton of school groups and it's important to have education space, but it's also important to have places for just research that you can leave out your sensitive Healy Bob and be confident that somebody isn't gonna step on it or accidentally accidentally break it or disturb it or mess with the data collection. So that's that's one of the real values of this of this place, um, is that uh, researchers can, can have high confidence that if they choose this as a site, they can do so. And then what we've seen over time with all these places around the world is, if Keith wants to do uh, coastal prairie grassland research, there's a, you know, a bunch of sites. But if somebody's doing bat research here and insect research here, and somebody has trapping data of the bull community here, it's like, well, maybe I should pick that spot, because then if I find something interesting, I can, I have some context. So then, then Keith will do his stuff here. And then, then the next person comes down, they're like, oh my gosh, there's grassland in. And so it sort of builds momentum, right? We sort of create a, an intellectual memory of the site, even if it's not super long, at least it, it gives us, it's better than some random site that we don't know what's going on. So there's all kinds of added value that by the very nature of having this protected area, it, it sort of builds on itself. So like how many how many groups do research here roughly right now? Uh, let's see, we have about 23 research projects per year that come in, and it averages about seven or eight groups each year. Um, and in terms of long term, they come back year after year after year. It's probably in the 20s. Yeah. Awesome. Not necessarily every year. Right, 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 right. A five-year interval or whatever. And so uh, as we mentioned, what the or as I mentioned to some of you guys, but just so we're clear, um, um, all field stations are expensive. All green labs, everything is always expensive. There is no making money on any field station, right? Just like there isn't making money on, I don't know, 
generally speaking, probably the dance program or whatever, right? That, that, that doesn't necessarily generate a huge amount of revenue and maybe um, don't create jobs that people make $100 million a year kind of doing, but we still say they're important, right? They're part of your education, they're part of making sure a whole person. Um, and we need these sites, just like we need laboratories and, and wet labs and refrigerators and all that kind of stuff, um, but they're very expensive. And so when this place was getting established, there's a new policy came from the, the network of the systems in, at the University of California system that run these things, and they basically said, they were tired of people saying, here, here's a forest, you want a forest? And we're like, we'll have a forest, and you get the forest, but then you have to do all the management and the maintenance, and everybody is really down to give money to start the museum. Very few people want to give money to the cleaning the toilets. Very few people want to give money to the fixing the light bulbs in the museum, right? It's like, so, so the, the UC said, hey, we're, we're only going to take new parcels into our protected area network if there's also an endowment, if there's also the money to keep it going. So when this one was started, we're in we're sort of a funky relationship, and maybe Keith can talk about that, but basically the owner has sort of like do, dollops this out for different periods of time and gives a little bit of money for you know key salary, et cetera. But even though this is a University of California system facility, it's not like there's a gazillion million UC support staff that come up here and maintain it like, like a, a quote unquote regular campus. Do you want to talk about the... Yeah, you did that really well. Because, yeah, there's there's um, all the reserves. There's 41 UC reserves, and then there, I don't know how many... We have, like, 12 or something. Yeah, 12. So, I mean, this is a common thing all over the place. Um, and they all have different kind of formats. Some are completely owned by the UC, and some are, you know, in conjunction with state parks or wherever. This one actually is privately owned still, but then it's given to the UC to, to manage and to run as you see fit. So the owner still owns this place. They give a small allotment every single year. They pay my salary and just enough money to get the lights on, right? And then I get rates and recharge. You know, when you guys come, I charge you like a whole five bucks to camp or something like that. I can't remember what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's not a lot. And of then money. it takes us like three years to pay them. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of money trickling in <laughs> groups and such. Um, but it's not. It's not it's a money making. It is not. If I need a new truck or if I need a new tractor. I get zero support from the UC system in terms of finances. I have zero money coming from UC right now. And I am the employee. I have one guy that comes in and helps me every other week, kind of, for one day. Um, but that's, that's it. It's <laughs> Well, the reason that's important to say is, Keith. Has, in other words, Keith has a ton of things he needs help with, right? <laughs> but seriously. And so, yes. uh, back when I was younger, we used to bring many, many classes up here specifically to help support the running of this place. So, <coughs> invasive species control, that kind of stuff. Um, and so, while our field methods class has sort of, sort of changed a bit, and now we've taken on a bunch of projects in Ventura County, um, uh, we sometimes will come here and do a a longer term thing to support these guys. If you guys are interested, if you think this is a cool place, uh, you can get, I can give you Keith's email, and yes. if you're like, hey, in the spring, we'd love to come up, maybe we could camp for a long weekend, and then, you know, work for eight hours or 10 hours helping these guys around. It's, there's a desperate need for all kinds of help, and some of it's technical, some of it's just, you know, strong back. Um, it's, these places do not have support, and so it's a great way to give back, and, you know, get to another camp in another couple days, but, but it's a wonderful place, but it needs a lot of, all these places need a lot of help and support. And it, it is, from the outside, it looks like, oh, everything's taken care of, or everything's running smoothly, and, and we're always close to the bone with these facilities. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely true. I, I usually give that talk to pretty much every class that comes through. If you guys want to come back up here, you know, shoot me an email, come to camp for the weekend, give me, you know, some, some hours of work, and explore the reserve. Is a piece of trash. <laughs> no time to get on there. Totally. You know. Totally. I, well, I don't, I don't mean that to mean trash, but I mean, I mean like, yeah, yeah, all kinds of ways. You can <laughs> I mean, the development team at UCSB Design. You know, they they gave me Instagram and uh, all this kind of stuff, and I have not posted one single thing on my Instagram. I don't have time to go around and do 
Instagram. I like, I'm, You're not a 14-year-old <laughs> lady. I'm, what are you doing? I'm digging dirt. You know, I don't have time to do this. <laughs> so, you know, and they'd be happy if I had like posts on that. And last night, my uh, internet went out. I have to go pretend I'm an IT person and see if I can figure out how to get my router to change back on. And yeah, you know, it's just it's constant. It's, it's everything I'm concerned from IT and computer to you know, internet tiling. You know, it's in the wrong place, yeah. and I gotta move it down to the other part of the property. It's, it's, you know, it is everything, all the time. So, invasive control, I wanna pull all this ice plant. It's still sitting there. I mean, there's so much to do. So, if you guys want to do something. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's go for that. Walk. Yeah. No, no, sorry, unless you guys have questions. Yeah, yeah okay. My email, my phone number is on one of those sheets in there. Okay. Text me. And, and I can me. give it to you too. I cool. Text me or email me if you, if you want to chat. All right. So, uh, uh, Jake, close that door.